If we must revert to a virtual learning model, is there pressure to reimburse or lower tuition, further stressing higher education's economic model? That's a lot, but it's good. <laughs> I, I think students are really want to come back and not just students, faculty, we, we all wanna be there back. It's a, you know, universities do tend to build this sense of community. Um, we have observed, uh, we have not observed a decline in deposits or in interest, actually quite the opposite. But the key here is to assure that we can reopen in a, in a way that guarantees the safety and health of students and also faculty and, and, uh, and, and staff. And so I'm sure that both the University of California and the State University of New York have, have done the same thing. I mean, very, very detailed plans. Universities mm. are, have developed incredibly detailed plans to make sure that that, that, that happens. Right. Ours has four pillars. One is the, you know, what everyone is saying, testing, tracing, and tracking, the triple T. Testing is very, very critical here. Number two is uh, cleaning and disinfecting, you know, hand hygiene, disinfection. Three, the most important, I think, is protecting personal space, which means wearing face covers and re-engineering every single space, residential facilities, dining facilities, classrooms, to assure safe distance. And the fourth is vaccinating, not against the coronavirus, because I don't think we will have a vaccine quite yet, although I am very confident we'll have one, but not in the fall. <clears throat> but against the influenza, this is the first time those sure. two viruses are going to coexist. And the one vaccine we have, which is against seasonal influenza, we should have everyone uh, take, have their flu shots. So I think if we do those things, and then innovate education, we use this opportunity to innovate along the lines of what President Napolitano was saying, blending, uh, I think we should be able to provide not just a, a you know, a, a, an experience that's similar to what was before, actually something better and make of the pandemic an incredible learning experience for this generation of students. You know, I think that very well said again. Um, one of the things that we've done is go back through the departments and look at every class and examine and assess the learning outcomes and find out, you know, there are just some things that need to be taught in a clinical setting, in a laboratory setting still can be done socially distant, as President Frank said, with proper personal protective equipment. And then we've learned what could be taught uh, online. And I, I'm sure, obviously, the, the President Napolitano and Frank have recognized this too, is that, you know, the concept of the flipped classroom. So I think you'll see all throughout higher ed changing, where you might have the master lecturer and you might have very large classes that even go throughout the system in some particular area, but then smaller, socially distant discussion, more detailed um, uh, work going on on campus. So I think that that may survive beyond COVID-19. Yeah, and I think one of the things that uh, has become clear is uh, that um, uh, there, there is more to the college experience than than being online. There's a there is a value in being on campus uh, uh, to uh, be forming new friendships, to be involved in extracurricular activities, to have kind of those spontaneous discussions with your professor um, that you really uh, can't can't uh, uh, match uh, online, and so. Um, uh, it's that that value that we have to continue to yep. build on uh, um, as we come back from the pandemic, come back safely with all of the measures that uh, President Frank and President Johnson have talked about, uh, um, but uh, recognize the value in that residential experience. Students want to come back. Their parents want their students to come <laughs> back. So um, that's something that uh, we should we should keep in mind. 